Veggies, Ethics and Current Affairs. So we're going to start out today talking about intellectual property rights. Um, and there are a couple different ways you could go with this issue. It's been coming up a lot um, all across the um, global stage. And the, so there's music, art, and literature, and sort of the idea of owning something that you've created yourself, and people not being able to steal that from you. But what we're going to be talking about today is um, pharmaceuticals and health. And if you've created some sort of life-saving medicine, do you have the right to hold on to it through a patent and sell it at a higher price and not allow other people to manufacture it? Um, so a lot of this is going to come from Robert Nozick, who is a classical libertarian philosopher, and his idea of the medical researcher example, which is essentially the same thing. Um, what he argues is that if you're not making anyone else worse off, that you can do whatever you want with your own property. So he would say that someone who came up with a cure for cancer, for example, doesn't have to sell it at an affordable price. He doesn't have to sell it at all if he doesn't want to, because those people aren't any worse off than they were before he invented the cure. So we have a real world example for you today. Um, a French company called Nutriset has created a product called Plumpy Nut. And it's basically a fortified peanut butter. It's got sugar and powdered milk and vegetable fats in it. And it can take a malnourished child to a healthy weight in six weeks. It's really a miracle product. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. It doesn't have to be mixed with water. So you eliminate a lot of the diseases that are a problem with other food sources. But they have a really tight hold on a patent for this. They're not letting anyone else um, create it, even though it's really not difficult. Um, and other people could do it for um, much lower cost. And so what we want to talk about is if Nutriset has the right to withhold this substance from other people, uh, not letting other people produce it, and um, if not, why? So I'd like to start off just having everyone give their first impressions of the issue. All right, um, initially, I would have to say that absolutely no. In, in, in light of the horrible state of poverty that exists throughout the world, that Nutriset just does not have the right to withhold things that could save millions of lives. But, um, and uh, you have to look at it from an economic perspective, which we'll discuss later. And um, also the topic that we mentioned of uh, intellectual property, like in the arts and things. Um, I have to say, as like an internet culture, we've been conditioned to believe that we have the right to all of these things for free. And we're probably going to continue to believe that. So changing the ethical sphere of making people pay for any information or music or art that they receive is going to be a really tricky situation. But um, back to the pharmaceutical point, um, if someone creates something that could save millions of lives, the, the weight of that does, just doesn't carry for them to make money. It's their, their interests in money making just don't matter compared to the amount of lives they could save. All right. Um... One of the first, uh, there, this issue is very complicated, and as Will said, we're going to go into the economic um, perspectives, uh, looking at this issue in a bit. But um, what I really want to stress right now is intellectual property rights. And there is a difference between intellectual property rights for arts and literature and culture and things like that, which we were not going to go into right now because I think we all have differing, op differing opinions. But um, intellectual property with regards to knowledge. Um, knowledge is something of something that belongs to all. I mean, do you have to pay to know to, to learn physics or to learn philosophy? Is, is this knowledge that um, thinkers all throughout human history have thought of? Um, does that really belong to somebody? Like, is that their property? I really don't think so, because the knowledge that we have today, the knowledge that, um, that goes into uh, pre creating a product like Plumpy Nut, has been based on thousands and, th thousands and thousands of years of human research, and the building of, of knowledge on top of knowledge. So um, I, Isaac Newton, one of the uh, most famous physicist once said that he was standing on the shoulders of giants. Everything he had accomplished was because people before him had accomplished things. What would it be like if those people owned their knowledge and didn't let someone like Newton um, develop on that kind of knowledge? So I think that intellectual property rights are fundamentally wrong and biased because that is 
knowledge is something that is the heritage of all humanity, and we cannot treat it as something that belongs to somebody just because they had the money or the fortune to be able to have access to it and build upon it. That's, that's I think, a very uh, interesting thought. Uh, however, like, the one thing must be held. I mean, I definitely agree with Patty when she says that when you add something to the common pool of knowledge that we have in scientific research, it's probably be adding nowadays a 1% to the 99% of years of research that we have. However, there must be a healthy system of incentivization for this common knowledge to be added. So, unfortunately, we live, not unfortunately, but you know, the currency that uh, incentivizes people to create is money. And in a world in which most economies are based on free market economies, it is necessary for there to be a system that incentivizes new ideas, especially in pharmaceutics, to come up. Now, uh, to go back to your side, so to stand with you, uh, I definitely agree that there must be some way to guarantee, well, first of all, observing this example, plumping out holds a monopoly. So even if we're thinking within the uh, free market, in a sort of libertarian optic, and I'm not a libertarian, like even if I were a libertarian, I'd be like, no, uh, other companies should be allowed to patent the same product and compete to guarantee the product. To me, that's one step. It's not the, uh, the final step because there are so many dead ends in the free market that lead to a big barrier between the citizen or the uh, consumer that needs that product and the companies giving it. That's why states put price floors and price ceilings all the time on things like milk and bread because you cannot um, afford to have a month in which people cannot buy milk for an affordable price because of the business cycles. Uh, but I think that there sh we should find a balance in which even though these um, benefits, these things are ensured to people, I think that people hold a positive right to having things like new pharmaceutics and guarantee the possible equitable standards of living possible on Earth. Uh, at the same time, there must be a process that does not in inhibit incentivization. That is something that is also common to art, music, and so on. So in pharmaceutics, we might say a solution would be the intervention of the state. So the state is also the one that, pro uh, that produces the incentive by investing in the long term, not only in guaranteeing that the balance works for the month. But that's another discussion. And I think that the big question is, where do we draw the line? I think, however, that there should be an entity that guarantees that everyone gets this sort of knowledge without destroying the creator from creating in the future years. Um, so that's where I stand. <laughs> okay, great. I think Patty brought up a really, really interesting discussion about whether or not you have any rights to intellectual property at all. Um, but I think for the sake of time or for the sake of argument, we're going to go from a starting point of you do have some rights. How is health, how are pharmaceuticals different from the other rights to intellectual property that you might have? And here we could go back to Peter Singer, whom we discussed a little bit last week and global justice and about having the responsibility to help others if you're able and the conflict that causes with property rights. Uh, Singer says that you should give until you lost something of equal value. Um, but Nozick would argue that your property is part of you, that that's not something that you should have to give up at all for anyone ever. So why don't we talk about that a little bit? All right, um, from the point of Nozick, he pretty much argues that you're a slave if you're forced to give up any sort of your intellectual property. But um, on the side of Singer, who believes that we should do everything in our power to help, he's noting on the fact that if we consider as intelligent humans, rational humans, that we have rights of any sort, including property rights, that for those rights to exist, there are also duties to fulfill those rights. And it's our duty to fulfill the rights of those that are not having their rights met. So all the millions of people who are in abject poverty without any food, without any like energy or ability to like create industry or anything in their own nation or wherever they are. It is our duty, the ones who have excess amounts of, of currency and food and pharmaceutical capabilities and intellect to provide for these people so that they can provide for themselves. And it's just our duty to make sure that their rights are met. All right. Um... Yeah, I, I see, I, I think we're going to ignore like all the negative duty stuff. We're concentrating on positive duties, all right. Um, but I think that we have to distinguish, and I don't think that Singer does a good job of doing this. He, he does not, 
he concentrates solely on individual philanthropy. So what one as oneself, as an individual, can do and should do to help others who are in a bad position. However, I think that this needs to be looked at from an institutional perspective. It needs to be um, a wealthy countries, wealthy countries who obviously have more than, than others. Um, it needs to be up to the institutions to form structures that, um, that enable these people to help themselves. Um, that enable these people to, that, that they, the institutions should have the duty to fulfill their rights to subsistence, which includes their right to health. Um, if, they're being, if they cannot live a, a life where they cannot provide for themselves, where they cannot work, then there's, there's no way that we can say, um, oh, you're not working hard enough, so you deserve this. No, there needs to be a floor where they're healthy, where they have subsistence, and it's an institutional um, it's an institutional flaw right now that they're not getting what they have. What yeah. They yeah. I, I really think that this is a very, very valid point. I mean, although I, I appreciate Singer's philosophy, I think that he's too afraid of being categorized as a communist to then uh, go into stepping. Let, let me just fantasize. <laughs> it's a complete speculation, but I think that the reason why he stands behind not going into saying the state should do it, well, I think that the state should do it. And institutions mm -hmm. should do it, not just individuals. And international institutions. As I well. agree exactly. Uh, that's I think that's just my philosophy fantasizing. Um, I I really stand with both of your points. Um, I would like to draw back to Nesbom. Nesbom is trying to you know uh, put that line you know higher the line of where the you know minimum standards of living should be for everything, and they go beyond the one dollar they conventionally um, conceive by the IMF. Uh, which is, you know, a full right to health, education, culture, and so on. Now, I see the question of intellectual property in pharmaceutics as a bargain, a symmetrical bargain between incentive on of one side, because we live in a free market economy, global north, however fancy that you want to put it, and on the other side, individual citizen benefits. Nesbaum tries to draw the line of individual global citizen benefits to this bar. This bar includes having access to those sort of benefits when they're accessible. So I stand with Nesbaum when I say that she was right in setting the bar there. People in the world have a right to have a positive right to acquire that sort of health because we have the technology to do it. However, we should not be too quick in just saying they should give it away because these entities, as whether we like it or not, because we accepted that we live in capitalist societies, whether you like it or not, are the ones that produce this sort of intellectual property. And this intellectual property is what keeps us going. Rawls says that inequality itself is not wrong if it produces a benefit even to the bottom of the class. I think that the free market is not enough to guarantee this, but I really agree that this point could be applied if the entity that guarantees that this inequality is productive is also the state. And the state is the people. So there's a series of, you know, chain reaction of conditions that need to hold. But I think that inequality in itself is not wrong as long as there is someone that makes sure that somebody's invention benefits everyone to bring them to that level of life that is uh, that has dignity in it. And that life, that level, I think, most approximately, is what N Nesbaum indicates. Okay, so we've gotten into an interesting conversation about different levels. Um, so we have state level and systemic level. I think with you talking about institutions and how everyone kind of as a whole should work for um, the benefit of the people who are the worst off. But I think there's an interesting conflict here with the role of the state because a lot of people would argue that the state is there to protect its own citizens. Um, and so we're getting to an increasingly globalized world where we feel a lot of the times that we do have responsibility to other people in other countries and how um, I think intellectual property rights is a really good example of how those two things conflict. Because it's better for, you know, maybe the, perhaps the French government to help the company, you know, help its own citizens make money off this, keep it um, their own property, rather than to help the people who are in Africa, say, um, starving of hunger. So is this, so you two seem to think that it, this is um, an institutional problem that the state should be joining in, but I think Really, it's more of a personal thing, um, the way the system is set up right now. Um, and so, those ministers that have uh, the responsibility as individuals running a company to give up their rights to this um, product that they've created. 
So I think uh, we're about out of time, so if we're just going to uh, give some last thoughts, wrap up really quickly. All right, I think your guys, you guys are conflicted in the concept of working in the system and working out of the system and starting a new system. And because, like Peter Singer, he doesn't say don't work with an institution, he says donate all your money to UNICEF, which is an institution of sorts mm -hmm. that feeds and provides. So it's just you guys disagree, and I do too, with the way that things work. So it's more of that, but in back to Plumpy Nut and Nutriset, um, I'm gonna <laughs> stick, yeah, that name. What, I'm gonna <laughs> stick with my original statement that um, when it concerns uh, a, a person's ability to live, I think intellectual property should easily be forgone. It's someone's ability to make money is not nearly as important as someone's life. No, for real, um, I, I agree with you in that um, a person's subsistence rights, be they negative or positive, it's, it's, there's contention, but um, a person's subsistence rights come before anything else because if you don't have subsistence, if you're not healthy, if you can't live, if you don't have food to be able to carry on your life, then um, you, don't have, you, you don't have a basis to have any other rights, any other functioning life, and that's what we're here for. Um, now, coming back to that whole institutional thing, um, we do live in an increasingly globalized world, and yes, we have, um, we have individual morality that we have to help others. However, um, we have to step away from this strong statism that, um, that was kind of the way of the past. Um, because of the way that markets have opened up and everything, be they for the good or for the bad, I'm not going to go into that. Um, but that strong statism has to be abandoned because this, this increasingly globalized world means that we need international institutions to regulate because things are going crazy and if we just let, um, for example, France keep this, um, keep this patent that isn't helping others, that could help others, has such potential. Um, there needs to be an international institution to regulate those positive, to make sure that countries and individual corporations fulfill those positive duties that they have to the rest of the world. And, um, and so we go into, um, away from statism and very indiv like individual nation, nationized things, um, and more to how can we help the world in general. Yeah, I would like to start from both of these points. First of all, with agree with with a, by agreeing with Will's premise, intellectual property should be overrun in order to guarantee that these benefits go to people. Lives are saved like this. Absolute priority. But then I'd like to push it two ways. First of all, from her sort of perspective, meaning what the state is. So as KC implied, you know, there's no real incentive for a state to for a government to require their citizens, imagine in a time of austerity, further money in taxation to give it to another country for philanthropy. But the state, I don't want to sound arrogant saying this, is becoming quite an obsolete concept. A state as we conceive it. I mean, you've got, I'm a, I believe in a European cause, for example, and you see that the European Union is economically fortifying itself. Why? Because of, comp of competition. Europe will never survive individually with uh, other economic powers growing up. I, I think that we're seeing a trend all the way from tribalism to this sort of global statism, absolutely, uh, from this sort of global statism that will lead to a situation in which a citizen living in Vietnam will have the incentive in the global community to help someone in Ethiopia surviving hunger. So I think that that's the direction and that's the mentality towards we need to, we're, the mentality we sort of need to adopt. So second of all, I would like to say that first of all, these institutions, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> second, <laughs> second, I'd like to say that there should be institutions that guarantee this. It is not only an individual positive right, it should be mandated by institutions. But these same institutions have to guarantee that these standards of living are met also by overruling intellectual property. At the same time, these institutions need also to um, create the further incentive for this sort of knowledge to be created. It is not enough to just take a patent away and steal the formula and create more and give it to the Ethiopians, which is kind of a stereotype here, but like to help whoever is in need. It is also necessary for the state to be the entity or whatever the new institution will be 
That also guarantees that these inventors will keep inventing, that the new resources and research will be met and that these people have an incentive, lucrative incentive, to keep doing this. Because we live in a collective community in which the knowledge needs to be put to the service of all, but it also needs to constantly be incentivized. Or else no, we a non-material incentive, though. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. Um, I would, I, and I think that the discussion has come to close, but I would like to bring our attention and the attention of the viewer um, to a TED talk that I saw the other day um, that actually addresses these concerns of um, people's rights to health, international, um, so everyone in the world, and also an incentive for pharmaceutical companies to keep, keep developing these new medicines to save people's lives. Um, it's Thomas Pago, one of the global justice philosophers that we read in our PST class. Um, he talks about a health impact fund, which is basically um, a fund of money that is uh, contributed to by wealthy nations of the world and run by um, a board, an international board. And so basically when, um, so institutions take from that fund to, it's very complicated, but um, pharmaceutical companies take from that fund to develop new technologies, but they do not spend superfluous money on marketing and things like that, which is where a lot, a lot, a lot of the money that pharmaceutical companies have goes instead of research. Um, and then though they would make um, profits, and but they wouldn't have to sell it at exorbitantly high prices to people who can't afford it, obviously. It would be at the lowest cost from the lowest um, cost producer, and it would benefit all the companies and the people in need. So we'll put a link on the on our blog okay. to, for you to see that talk. Okay. It's very interesting. Yeah. So I think it's obvious that we've only just scratched the surface of this topic. It's a very, a very deep sort of philosophical problem um, that has serious real world applications. And we're not doing this just to hear ourselves talk about it. We really want to open it up to everyone else who's watching. This is a debate forum above all. So if you go to um, all the links that are on our Facebook page um, and they're going to be at the bottom of this video as well, to our blog, to our Twitter, we really want your input. We want your comments. We want to know what you think. So we're going to be on there too commenting and having discussions with you. So um, anything at all you have to say about this or anything else you want to say to us, please, please post it on our blog. So basically, uh, just to sum it up, uh, please visit the website gaijisethics.wordpress.com that should be the main focus of the discussion. The video will be embedded and the discussion will take place there. We'll be there as moderators and to sort of kindle the conversation, but everyone is invited to comment. It will be absolutely like moderated, discreet, and uh, every opinion is valued. So please, please share. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you.